Topic 17, High Level Equilibrium, Volume 4, Equilibrium Law Calculations, and we just look at some more de detailed calculations involving KC, and you'll need a calculator for this volume. IB understandings and applications, we look at the Schiller's principle and changes in concentration and the equilibrium law, and the key application is solutions or solving problems using the KC expression. Text ref is there as well. Okay, so the following equilibrium process has been studied at 230 degrees, two NO2 gas plus O2 gas with the equilibrium arrows going to two NO2. In one experiment, the concentrations at equilibrium are found to be NO 0.0542, O2 0.127, and NO2 15.5. Calculate the equilibrium constant of the reaction at this temperature. So very simple one, we need to write our equilibrium expression. K equals the concentration of the products to the power of their coefficients over the concentration of the reactants to the powers of their coefficients. This was in Topic 7, Volume 2. Subbing in my values now, making sure that I remember to put the right values in the right spot um, and squaring them appropriately, I can then solve for the K value. So here we are writing the equilibrium expression, subbing in the values, and then we can calculate our K value directly from those. So here our K value is equal to 6.44 to three significant figures times 10 to the five, and the units would be M to the minus one. What does that K value mean about the extent of reaction? Well, a large K value implies that this equilibrium lies in favor of the products. Okay, the next one's a little bit different. Liquid nitrogen tetroxide, N2O4, was used in one of the fuels for the NASA Apollo space missions. We have brown nitrogen dioxide gas and colorless N2O4 according to the equilibrium equation below. When 0.3 moles of N2O4 gas was introduced into a previously evacuated two decimeters cubed vessel, it was found that when the system reached equilibrium, 0.2 moles of NO2 was present. Find the equilibrium constant for the reaction at this temperature. Now, when you read a question like this, I want you to think about initially, there was N2O4 and they gave us information about that. And then at equilibrium, they gave us some information about the other thing. So we can't simply just plug in the values for this one because we don't know what the equilibrium concentrations are for each of the species. So we have to use this table, which I've designed, which is called an ice table. We can work out, work with the initial concentrations, we can work the changing concentrations, and then we can work out the equilibrium concentrations. Before we use this table though, we need everything to be in the same units. So I'm gonna go through and change N2O4 into a concentration, mole over volume, and then I'm also gonna work out the concentration of NO2 by doing mole over volume. So here's my concentration initially of N2O4, and then my equilibrium concentration of NO2 would be 0.1. Now they didn't tell us the equilibrium concentration of N2O4, so we've got to work it out. And here we're going to use the table to do that. So this is a, a concentration ice table. Initially I had 0.15 molar of N2O4 and I didn't have any information about NO2, so that is blank. At equilibrium though, we worked out that we have 0.1 molar of NO2. So that means it must have increased by 0.1 molar. It's had to be created. Now, if you have a look at the coefficient, it's got a two out the front. So if its concentration has increased by 0.1, then the concentration decrease of N2O4 must be half because it's a one to two ratio. So the change for N2O4 is minus 0.05, half of what NO2 went up by. So now I have both the equilibrium concentrations, which I've worked out from the table, 
Now I can use my equilibrium law expression, subbing in my equilibrium concentrations and working out my K value, which is 0 0.1 and the units are molar. So here's another example, a little bit more challenging, three species in this equilibrium. But again, we're looking for the before and after effect. So we have 0.2 mole of PCL5 was introduced into a previously evacuated 1.5 decimeter cube vessel. It was found that when the system reached equilibrium, the concentration of CL2 was 0 0.070 mole per decimeters cubed. Find the equilibrium constant for the reaction at this temperature. So again, we've got the problem. We've got the mole of one, and then we've been given the concentration of the other. So we have the units mismatch. So we've got to work with that. And we've got that before and after situation. So initially we had some PCL5, and then they give us information about CL2. And we've got to work out the equilibrium concentrations of every species in the mixture to work out the K value. So for my ice table this time, I'll be using a concentration table and I need to work out the concentration of PCL5, mole over volume. They told us the number of moles was 0 0.2 and the volume was 1.5, so we can calculate the concentration. At equilibrium, the concentration of CL2 was given. So now I go in and fill in my ice table. It's a good idea to fill in your ice table the same way that the reaction has been written. So PCL3, we actually have none of. So I made a little mistake there, but as you can see, I will I'll rub it out in a second. I do know that the CL2 concentration though, which was given is 0 0.070. Now, initially we had none of that. So it must have been produced. So we've got the change in concentration is plus 0 0.7070. And here I've realized my mistake and we didn't have any PCL3, but we had some PCL5, 0 0.13. Now CL2 and PCL3 are on the same side of the reaction. So if CL2 has increased, then PCL3 must have increased. They're in a one-to-one -one ratio, so they will increase by the same amount. So the equilibrium concentration of PCL3 is 0 0.070. For the PCL5, well, if the other two have gone up, then the only way they could go up is if PCL5 broke down. So it must go down by the same amount because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So now we're in a position to work out the equilibrium constant by subbing it into the equilibrium law. Our constant will be concentration of PCL5 over concentration of PCL3 times concentration of CL2. Then I can sub in my values from the equilibrium row of the ice table. The PCL3 and the CL2 are the same, so I've just squared the value, and that gives me a value of 13, and it's m to the minus one, because we would have m over m squared as our units. Okay, the, second, the next one's a little bit different where we need to work out a concentration. So we've been given an equation and we've been given the K value for this reaction. And it says to calculate the equilibrium constant of HI, given that the equilibrium concentrations of the other gas are given below. So here we need to use our Kc value and sub that into the equilibrium expression, and then we're gonna rearrange it to try and find the thing that we want. In this case, it's the concentration of Hi. So we start off with our equilibrium expression, which is concentration of products to the power of their coefficients over the concentration of the reactants to the power of its coefficients. And we have Hi quartered, so that's going to provide a little bit of interest when we go to rearrange it. I sub in my values. I've got my K value subbed in. I've got the concentration of H2O. I sub that in. I've got the concentration of I2. I can sub that in. HI, that's the thing we want to find. So we'll leave that as is. And we've got the concentration of O2 as well. 
Now this can be pretty complex to try and rearrange, so my advice here is to do the simple things first. So what I'm going to do is take the 0 0.076 to the other side and multiply 515 by that, which gives me the 37.383, and then I multiply the top row together to give me a value, and that's all over HI to the power of 4. Now what I need to do is get the HI to the power of 4 to the other side, and then to remove to the power of 4, we would have to take the fourth root of the transposition. So I've swapped those two values. Now we take the fourth root, which you, can, which you would need a calculator for, and the button is on the calculator. Let me know if you need some help with that. And that gives me 0 0.189 molar. That is the equilibrium concentration of HI. Okay, the final one, another ice table question. This time we've got four species that we need to deal with and I haven't given you the setup. But again, we can see that we're given some information about before, initially, and then we're given some information about after. Remember, we must get the units correct. So here we've been told some information about mole and then they've told us that the equilibrium mixture contains a concentration. So we need to use our ice table to work out our change and to work out our equilibrium concentration and then sub it into our equilibrium expression. So the first thing I'm going to do is write my equilibrium expression, which will be concentration of CO multiplied by H2 cubed over the concentration of CH4 multiplied by the concentration of h O. Now I've got to work out these values. I want you to go through and do the ice table for me and then I'm going to write up the values for the concentrations um, and you can check your answer. Do the ice table now. So the equilibrium concentrations for the four species are as follows. Concentration of CH4 should equal 0 0.020. The concentration of H2O should be equal to 0 0.030. The concentration of CO 0 0.903. The concentration of H2 0 0.099 molar. Now what we can do, substitute those numbers into our equilibrium expression to find the k value. Remembering to include the squared and the cubed, don't forget those things. Type this in in one step on your calculator, don't do each half individually. And we can see that the k value is 1.5 and the units would be molar squared. Why? Because we have mole to the power of molar to the power of 4 on the top and molar squared down the bottom. So volume four, some top tips. Make sure you know when to use an ice table. It's that initial and equilibrium that gives it away. Think about the units and make sure you look at the stoichiometric ratios. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.